Welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to look at the relationship between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates and using this relationship we're going to be able to find a, a very easy convenient way in order to convert from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates or vice versa polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. For, so first let's take a look at trying to establish a relationship between these two systems of measurement. So let's say that I have a point P and we're going to just overlay our rectangular system and our polar system. So in other words, I'm going to draw this x-y axis. So this is x. We have my vertical axis y. And we're going to overlay our pol polar coordinate system right on top of this. So starting from the origin going to the right, my x-axis is also going to act as my polar axis. So let's say we have some point P out in space and this point is PXY but we also want to look at the form of this point PR theta so we're going to look at the same point here and see if when looking at this point let's see if we can establish a relationship between our polar coordinates and our rectangular coordinates so first let's go ahead and draw a little triangle here we're going to draw a triangle with this point P the origin to point, point P, point P to the x-axis, and this point on the x-axis back to the origin. So let's take a look what we have on this triangle. This right side of this triangle, this is my y value of the point P, isn't it? This base of the triangle, this is my x value. Now the way we've set it up, this is a right triangle. This angle here, this is the theta of P in its polar form. And the hypotenuse of this triangle, this is the r in its polar form, isn't it? So here we have, we've overlaid these two units of measurement, and we can establish some relationships. I know that because this is a right triangle, then using SOHCAHTOA, my x over r, this is equal to cosine of theta. And what that means for us is that with these two versions of this point P, my x is actually equal to r cosine theta, where r and cosine are the or r and theta are the components of my polar form. Now I also have that y over r is equal to sine theta. So that's going to give me that y is equal to r sine theta. Now we have a couple other relationships as well. I know from my Pythagorean theorem that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And I also know I can just take the square root of both these sides and I'm going to have r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now notice that I didn't do plus or minus here and the reason is is that we're going to make sure when we're doing these conversions that we choose an appropriate theta so that we're going in the positive direction for that theta. In other words r will always be positive as long as we choose the correct theta. And we're going to choose that theta by using this last relationship from SOHCAHTOA and that is that tangent of theta is equal to y over x assuming of course we're not looking at a point where x is equal to zero. So here x does not equal zero. Now if x equals zero that's the only time we're not going to use this tangent and um, really if x equals zero then if we're converting from rectangular to polar we're going to know exactly what theta is because a positive y when x is zero corresponds to theta of pi over two and a negative y when x equals zero corresponds to a theta of three pi over two. So we really don't have to worry too much about when x equals zero. That's actually a pretty simple case. The rest of the time we're going to use this tangent theta equals y over x. So let's take a look at when we use these. When we're converting to convert from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates, we're going to use these first two. We're going to use the fact that x is equal to r cosine theta and that y is equal to r sine theta. All right, if we're given a point in polar coordinates, that means that I'm given r and theta. So we can very quickly calculate out r cosine theta and r sine theta and that's going to give me x and y, my rectangular coordinates for the same point. Now to convert from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates, we're going to use our other two. We'll use that r 
is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared and sometimes we'll use the fact that r squared is x squared plus y squared but this is implied from this first one that I listed here already isn't it? I can always just square both sides so we really just need to remember this first one and we're going to use the fact that tangent of theta is y over x as long as x is not equal to zero and again if x is equal to zero we won't need this tangent of theta because that means theta is either pi over two or three pi over two depending on if y is positive or negative so in this case if we're given a rectangular point we have x and y so we just plug that in right here we're going to get r and we're going to plug it in over here and solve for theta now notice that i wrote tangent of theta equals x over or y over x i did not write theta is equal to tangent inverse of y over x. Now you may think to yourself, well why didn't you write that? Can't we just take the inverse tangent on both sides and that's what we get? Well that that is true. The problem with listing this as our theta is that, for example, let's take a look at what happens up here. Um, if I have some point over here, and let's say that this is the point uh, negative negative 1 1 well I know that this theta here is going to be 3 pi over 4 isn't it but if I look at tangent inverse of y over x or negative 1 this is equal to negative pi over 4 right so if we use tangent inverse we'll sometimes get the correct answer as long as theta is actually in quadrant 1 or 4 because that's the range of tangent inverse but if my theta is actually in quadrant 2 or 3 we need to be a little bit more particular we need to not just find what tangent inverse of theta is or what tangent inverse of y over x is we need to find what theta we have such that tangent of theta is y over x and theta is in the cor correct quadrant that's given to us by the points x and y so this is not what we're going to use. Sometimes it will work, but in general that's not going to give us the correct theta. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples, and actually I kind of spoiled it with this negative 1, 1. I think that's one of the examples we have later. But let's say we want to find the rectangular coordinates of the point 4 pi over 6. So we're going to use our first couple of uh, conversion formulas first. I know that x is equal to r cosine theta so here my r is 4 I'm looking at cosine of pi over 6 and cosine of pi over 6 we know is the square root of 3 over 2 so this gives me that my x is 2 square root of 3 now similarly we know that y is r sine of theta so plugging in what I have this is 4 sine of pi over 6 now sine of pi over 6 we know is 1 half so this gives me a y value of 2 so my point p in rectangular coordinates or pxy is equal to 2 square root of 3 2 okay easy peasy now let's try something in the other direction. Let's say, and this is where I said I spoiled it, we're going to go ahead and convert the point negative 1, 1 to polar coordinates. Now we're given a little bit of uh, additional restriction here. We want to convert the point negative 1, 1 to polar coordinates where r is greater than 0 and theta is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 2 pi. Now the reason we have these restrictions is there's actually infinitely many solutions here, isn't there? Um, I can write uh, the point negative 1, 1, as we saw in the last video, I can write this in lots of different ways with all these different coterminal thetas, or I can write r in a positive or negative direction depending on the theta I choose, and there's no single solution. But with these two restrictions, there actually is going to be exactly one solution to writing this point uh, in polar form. So let's see if we can find what this is. Now I know r here is going to be positive, so we just use r as the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now my x is negative 1, so this is negative 1 squared. My y is just 1, so this is just going to be the square root 
of 2. Now to find theta, we know that tangent of theta is equal to 1 over negative 1, so just negative 1. So that gives me that if I know that theta is between 0 and 2 pi, then that gives me that theta is equal to either 3 pi over 4 or 7 pi over 4, isn't it? These are my two solutions for theta based on this information. Or in other words, between 0 and 2 pi, 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4 are the two angles where I get tangent of those angles is equal to negative 1. So we need to infer a little bit about our quadrant information. Because negative 1, 1 as a point is in quadrant 2, then we need to choose an appropriate theta that's also going to be in quadrant 2. So this gives me that theta is going to be 3 pi over 4, isn't it? So my point P in polar coordinates, P r theta, is going to be equal to, we found our r to be the square root of 2, and we found our theta to be 3 pi over 4. And there we have it. All right, so that's how we convert points. Now we're going to use these same conversions in the next video to convert uh, equations. So we can have these polar equations or rectangular equations and be able to convert them to the other system of measurement. So we'll see you there.